just uh, catch you all up to speed. She was a four-year letter winner at Nebraska from 1995 to 1998. Before, she'd been here at Nebraska for eight years, since 2016. She led Dakota to the WNIT Championship in 2016. She was a 2018 Big Ten Coach of the Year. Also a Naismith National Coach of the Year finalist. And she's led the Huskers to the NCAA Tournament in 2018 and 2022. Coach Amy Williams, how you doing, my friend? Hey, Adam, I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing good, and I appreciate you taking the time to join me. So, the season so far, you're 13 and six at this point. Okay, so talk to me about how the how you feel about the team so far, how they're doing at this point, and looking ahead to the rest of the season. Yeah, I feel like um, we are still a growing team, which um, I'm excited about. I think, you know, you can tell as a head coach when you have a group that's really bought in and um, excited about continuing to grow. We haven't peaked, and that's okay. Um, you know, we've had some really good wins, and um, we've had some tough losses, but um, we feel like we are still crescendoing towards the end of the season, which is what where we want to be. Uh, we've got kids that are in the gym every day, really working hard, continuing to uh, try to polish up on the things we need to get better at. And so uh, I feel incredibly encouraged about the opportunities that we still have in front of us on our schedule. We've got a number of um, ranked opponents, and, and when you play in the Big Ten Conference, you have a lot of opportunity to um, to have some really good resume-building wins uh, throughout the entirety of that schedule. So we're pretty excited about that, excited about this weekend, and, and lots, of, lots of good things coming from this team. Yeah, you mentioned, so you're a team that's still learning, growing, developing, very common at this point. So talk to me about some of the players who have kind of taken that leadership role in your locker room so far this season. Which players have stood out the most to you when it comes to being a leader on this team? Yeah, I mean, there's there's really kind of two that stand out the most. And um, the first would be Alexis Markowski. And, um, you know, she and Jazz Shelley um, have both kind of taken – uh, a very big leadership role for this group. And I think they lead in very different ways, Adam. They um, are, you know, Alex is a really competitive kind of rah-rah, like wants to compete every day in practice, um, every drill. She's, you know, hollering out like, we got to get a stop right here. We need a three. We got to, you know, like she just um, keeps that competitive fire all the time. And um, the, the real growth I've seen in her leadership is uh, she just this year has just taken another step forward in her self accountability, which has, has really impacted the rest of our team in their ability to kind of look in the mirror and say, okay, yeah, Lexus is, you know, producing double doubles on a regular basis, but still looking in the mirror about how can I get better for our team and have a bigger impact on our ability to win? Um, it makes everybody else want to do the same. And I think Jazz Shelley is leaning heavy on her experience. And, um, you know, she's been, you know, just a tremendous example for our team about, you know, what's your response look like? You know, when things are going great for you, but when things are not going great for you, how do you respond? On. Can you find something else to throw yourself into that will still impact our team in a positive manner? You know, playing great defense if your shot's not falling, whatever it might be. And I think um, she's really grown in that area and been a, 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 a very um, excellent leader um, by example for our team in that realm. Now, your team has shown what they're capable. You've gotten hot at, at certain times this year. You started off 10-2. and two. You're, in, you're deep within the meat of the Big Ten schedule at this point. As you mentioned, opportunities for resume builders, opportunities to play against really good opponents within the Big Ten Conference. And I talked a little bit about consistency at the top of this program. What's the biggest key to developing consistency within a team that's still learning, growing, and developing within the meat of this Big Ten Conference schedule? The big key to that, Adam, and, and it's really, really tough, but is you've got to find a way to take care of business and protect your home court, but then you also have to be able to take the show on the road. And, um, you know, that's something that we're really learning. We've got to be able to have, you know, in our last three ball games, um, we played outstanding, focused, complete 40 minute game against Michigan at home. Um, but the two road games, you know, we could point to significant, um, uh, 
points in the game where we maybe lost our focus for a few minutes and the really good teams in this league are going to make you pay when you do that. So uh, being able to have that focused approach for 40 minutes and, and being able to sneak a couple road wins to, to develop the consistency that you, that you want. Um, and that's, that's a tough challenge in, in um, the Big Ten Conference. I mean, I feel like we really challenged ourselves with our schedule this season and, and um, put ourselves in a position where, you know, it's going to be a um, tough, tough challenge. But also uh, because of that, um, you know, we feel like we're, we're prepared for anything that's going to come down the stretch. And we've also put ourselves in a position where uh, we're in pretty good standing in net rankings, you know, to, right now that 27th in the net ranking and that's just a credit to the schedule that we've played so if fans and i'm sure fans are aware of this but if fans have ever wondered the type of impact that you can have on a game like the the the, the lady huskers are about 500 on the road they're winning almost 90 percent of their games at home so i would i would urge the fans to keep coming out showing support showing up to the games and show some love for the uh, lady huskers basketball a program here now you've got Iowa coming up obviously they're pretty good 18 and 2 overall 7 and 1 within the Big 10 does this game just kind of the rivalry aspect a little bit Nebraska versus Iowa in general does this game mean a little bit more to you as far as just a rot from the rivalry aspect at all well I think there is that I mean there's just no doubt about it that um, that has become a real thing. I think Adam, you know, when I played at Nebraska and, you know, like um, there were some different rivalries in the Big 12, but since we've moved into the Big 10 conference, it's been a real healthy and fun kind of rivalry between Iowa and Nebraska. Uh, we find ourselves very, very familiar with each other's rosters. Um, we find ourselves in recruiting battles um, quite extensively um, with their roster. So I think there's some merit to that, no doubt about it. But in the grand scheme of things, our team really tries to keep our focus on, you know, what these opportunities can do for us and our team and the goals that we have set out for ourselves and um, and what a win at Iowa City would do for us. And, and, you know, just a really special opportunity. And so we're trying to stay focused on that and not let it get um, super emotional. I'm joined on the Allo Fiber VIP line by Nebraska women's basketball head coach, Amy Williams. All right, can't talk about Iowa women's basketball without Caitlin Clark. So talk to me about what it's like to prepare for a player like that and how you try to uh, teach the girls, uh, the ladies, as they get ready to take on Iowa, Caitlin Clark, and how you try to defend a really good player like that. Yeah, I mean, she's a tremendous player. Everybody's asking, you know, how can you slow her? How can you stop her? I don't think there's very many people that have cracked that code yet. I mean, when, um, you know, in her last a uh, couple ball games there's been multiple over 30 point um, uh, performances even a 45 point performance in their loss at Ohio State um, you know so I think um, you know it's, it's really challenging to kind of figure out her game is so well rounded it's well documented that she can you know score from all kinds of places on the court and and if you do this and take this she'll take this and do this and you know I think um, the underrated, you know, parts of her game is she's deceptively fast. Um, she's in outstanding condition, never seems to really fatigue. And so our ability to potentially, um, you know, kind of run some different people at her and make it a team effort to try to slow her down. Uh, but even more focus on trying to help contain her supporting cast, which is a tough task in and of itself. There's a lot of really experienced sixth year and fifth year players out there on the court at the same time as her. And so they, they tend to play pretty poised and, and they know their roles. They play within their roles. And so, um, but, but finding ways to really keep your focus for 40 minutes so that, um, so that her supporting cast doesn't just go crazy as well. All right, so you, you do something similar in practice that I've seen John Cook do with the Nebraska volleyball team is you tend to practice against guys. Like in your practices, the team is practicing five-on-five five or whatever the drill may be going against guys. So my question is this. Where do you find these guys? Okay, how do I get this job? How do I apply for this? And just where do you find these guys at? Yes. Well, I have awesome recruiters on my coaching staff, and uh, that includes not just for our um, active playing roster, but also uh, finding great, um, you know, just reliable young men that are um, committed, you know, that really want to be a part of it, that know and value um, just how important their role is in our preparation every day, and um, and that really kind of 
um, are somebody that we can depend on that are going to show up whether we have a Saturday morning practice at 8 a.m. or whether we've got a um, evening practice at 7 p.m. They're there and they are uh, dependable and reliable and um, so we are constantly recruiting those a lot of word of mouth um, you know several um, kids that uh, you know on our male practice team who play in rec ball or play in certain leagues and they they're like hey we should talk to this guy they're recruiting other scout guys for us and so it's um it's been we've been just really really blessed with some reliable amazing guys and i'll tell you this week um you know cam who's a kind of a long tenured uh, male practice player you know this is his favorite week when he gets to be caitlin clark so <laughs> that's pretty cool that's awesome and you know in watching your practice these guys not just got to be able to have basketball skills but they got to be able to go from a two three zone to a one three one to a full court press to a man to man then they got to be able to break these things depending on what you want to practice on defense so they got to have the skills but they've also got to have pretty good knowledge and like you mentioned a lot a high level of commitment so shout out to your team your coaching staff the people who recruit and find these guys and the male practice players as well now chatting really quick about recruiting when you're going out and you're recruiting and you're looking for the next lady to join your team what are specific traits that you might be looking for as, as you're evaluating potential players well obviously you know talent is something that you know all of us coaches are are keeping an eye on but um for us like my my players my assistant coaches know like uh don't send me to go watch kid if she's not going to play hard. Like those, that's one of the biggest traits that we're looking for is competitive nature. And is this player, you know, passionate? Can you see their love for the game? And um, does that kind of uh, encourage, you know, them to be playing hard on every possession and giving everything they've got. I think that's something that comes out when you watch um, young women play and um, is is not only you know what their talent level is but um, but how hard and how committed they are to wanting to be the best version of themselves and that's something that we spend a lot of time at them you know once we've identified a player as somebody that we feel like is talented and that their skills match up to what our needs are uh, but then we will work diligently to communicate with counselors and high school coaches and club coaches and parents and people around that athlete to find out um, just you know what the intricacies are with their um, their passion for the game their love for the game their effort their energy that kind of thing all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by Nebraska women's basketball head coach Amy Williams. Be sure to check out GE Landsc Landscape Supply at GELandscapesupply.com or call 402-467-1627. And this last question I have for you is one that I'm, I'm seriously curious and interested how it's going to play out with sports that travel way more often than football does. So, I mean, football team might travel every other weekend when you have more home games than away games it's probably not even every other weekend but with the new big 10 okay and being part of a, a sport that's going to travel a little bit more often i chatted with mark matting the wrestling coach last week i'm just curious with the addition of the california teams the northwest teams the big 10 really being coast to coast how you think that's going to impact uh, a program and a team like yours when it comes to traveling a little bit more often yeah, to be honest with you, Adam, like I really feel like Nebraska, at Nebraska, we are well positioned with the new additions in the sense that um, really we will be crossing two time zones when we go out to play on the West Coast. And I understand that there are some ramifications with that, but, um, you know, I really feel like, you know, if, if, it's, if our conference schedule is 18 games one way or the other, um, we're, we might be replacing another trip to the East Coast with another trip to the West Coast, but because of our proximity being very centrally located in the United States, the travel out to California is not significantly different for us than it will be if we travel to Penn State or Maryland or Rutgers, you know, in, in that, in the travel sense as far as the flight itself. Now, Covering two time zones as, a port, as opposed to one, um, that's a challenge in certain, you know, realms. I think you might be, you know, playing a game at, you know, 7 or 8 p.m. out there 
in California and that's 10 p.m. start time at home and you know you're used to hopefully you know getting ready to head towards bed around then you know so I mean there's some things there that I think come into play but I think because of our positioning at Nebraska being very centrally located I think it's a little less of a concern than if we were Maryland having to travel to the west coast Mm -hmm. for things um so, you know, but I think, you know, from my standpoint, it, you know, it sounds like, you know, they haven't made a, a determination yet for sure about whether our conference schedule will go from 18 games, stay at 18 games, maybe move to 19 games. Potentially, they've been talking about going to a 20 game conference schedule for the women. Um, none of that has been determined for sure just yet. But um, I think if we stay at 18 games, um, we'll be playing, you know, probably very similar travel than what we're doing right now. All right, Coach, I want to thank you for taking the time to join me today. I really appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the season, and good luck against Iowa. Thanks so much, Adam. Have an awesome weekend. Take care. You you too. Thanks, Coach.